if we're going to talk about whether Santa is coming or not, first question is, why would Santa arrive? Is there a reason for a Santa rally in 2022? Now, remember, the reason the Santa rally is something we talk about every December is because when we look back over the course of, say, the last you know, five years, 10 years, and we can pull up the S&P and do this, when we start looking at the last five years, 10 years, and we ask ourselves, all right, are we expecting Santa to come? Let's, let's go take a look at the S&P, right? And the question is, what is the typical movement at the end of December? You can see this right there, right? This is the typical movement, second half of December, right? Uh, this is the last 10 years. How about the last 25 years? How about the last 72 years? <laughs> okay. How about the last five years? Our expectations as we go into the latter half of December is, is this move. By the way, this move on average begins, as you can see here, around the 22nd or 23rd. Santa occurs the last basically five trading days, last five trading days of the year. That's why we expect it. That's why it's talked about so much. Macroeconomically, let's talk about where we are in terms of price action and target rate probabilities. Why would Santa come? So we know the tendency for Santa to come. But let's talk about now, 2022, December 20th, right? We're about two to three days from when we would expect Santa rally. So it's too early to say whether it's a yes or no. It's too early. The place where I'm most expecting the Santa rally would be the same place that I would expect the window dressing rallies. They really are, in many ways, one and the same. Dow would be a higher probability. Healthcare or even Johnson & Johnson would be a higher probability. Uh, we can go down the list of sectors and individual indices and say there are some relative outperformers. So where are we looking for Santa? That's a really good narrowing down of trends that have been strong, say, through the last month or even the last quarter, this, this quarter that we're in right now. Wrapping this up, kind of this idea of why Santa would show up, let's go to the target rate probabilities. As long as, and this is the current look, as long as expectations are for a peak, this is what they would call the terminal rate, as long as the peak is here, four and three quarters to 5%, very little reason for market participants to be concerned that the Federal Reserve is more hawkish. What is more hawkish? It's anything to the right of this column, right? By the way, less hawkish would be anything to the left. This week alone, we have two events, two big events. Friday would be the bigger of the two. That would be key parts of the macroeconomic pillar, which is growth. That's one, 8.30 on Thursday. And the other is the PCE, the Federal Reserve's pet inflation gauge. And that's 8.30 on Friday. The PCE being the most important of the two this week. These are reasons for traders to make bigger adjustments to what's happening inside the Dow or healthcare and bigger adjustments to that target rate probability expectation. So again, we want to find what the highest column is and then ask ourselves, you know, does that hold? And when do we start factoring in when the first rate cut could be? Gang, it's not overwhelming, but September becomes part of the conversation. November, right? Look, look at the column that's the tallest now. It's the one just one notch left, one quarter point less than our terminal rate, than our highest peak rate, right? So by September, November of next year, we're slowly starting to see a higher expectation for a quarter point rate high, cut, rate cut. And by December, again, this is obviously a year away, but Fed Fund Futures say we could even see the second quarter point rate cut by December of 2023. This is why I mean we have to look at March and May, wherever we peak, and then forward to find out, do we hold that four and three quarters to 5%? And then when does 
the four and a half to four and three quarters column start to grow. The reason I dive into this so much, gang, it's, it's the easiest way to understand the macroeconomic reality around the Federal Reserve rather than dealing with every data release of jobs, inflation, or growth. Just see where those releases map to on this particular site. If you're looking for this site, really easy. It's a fantastic site. Google CME FedWatch tool. It'll be the first link that comes up. So take a look at this as I've shown you. It's the easiest way to track this. And remember, window dressing and Santa Rally are very, very similar. It's just that the Santa Rally is condensed to those last five days, five trading days of the year, and the first two trading days of the new year, all right? And that is what we're looking at going forward. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.